Well guys, here's the mud. Wasn't supposed to be here till 7, but it's 640. What are you doing, dude? On a Saturday. You're early, man. You're 20 You're 20 minutes early. Hey. Jesus. 20 minutes early, 20 minutes late. I got nobody here yet. <laughs> Except me and Jay. There's no Yeah, that's all I need. <laughs> All right, we're pouring this barn out today, guys. It's 24 by 48. Um, like I said, they're they're 20 minutes early. With the concrete, we got to wheel this thing. I got nobody here yet, so uh, it's still dark out. But we're getting things unloaded. Just get setting up the laser. That's Dwight in the truck. Bringing the truck in, guys. They're here early again, these guys. 20 minutes early. I'm like, Jesus. Good thing I didn't sleep in. There's Scotty's phone. I don't see the Cleveland. Let's see what she looks like, guys. These guys, I can't even yell, here comes the mud, because they're so early, they sneak in on me lately. This is bull crap. Yeah. Let's see what she looks like, guys. Let's see how she blows down the old chute. I'd say if we dump the first block, we don't have to dump too much of the second block. That looks nice right there. I like that, buddy. I like that. Yeah. yeah, the rest is nice. Scotty Spoon's here. You didn't see the Clevelands, did you? No. You didn't see two more guys, did you? Oh, we got two coming, two more? Two more, they show up. Cleveland's. Hey guys, Bondo here. So we're pouring out this floor, and as you can see, we're wheelbarrowing the whole thing. Um, that's me with the. I got a potato rake in my hand, and I'm pulling up the wire here as they dump the wheelbarrows on there. This floor is about five and a half inches thick. It's a uh, four thousand pound concrete. It's got a uh, light air in it, air entrainment because. Uh, we live in a cold climate and our concrete is subject to freeze and thaw. So we do put a little bit of air, which uh, gives the concrete a, some bubbles, which accepts a little bit of water. And then if it does freeze, it won't um, blister the surface of the concrete. So this building is going to eventually get closed in, but it's probably not going to get heated all the time. So um, we got a decent amount of people here after everybody showed up. Um, as you can see, the concrete truck was a little bit early, so um, the concrete truck actually beat most of my guys here. So uh, that's how we're doing it, guys. I'm pulling the wire up. I got three wheelbarrows going, two of those big Brentwoods, which uh, I highly recommend them for moving concrete. But I'm sure somebody's going to ask why we didn't use a pump. We don't use pumps very often to do these floors. We can wheel them pretty fast. And um, it costs about $1,000 to pump a floor like this. And when we pour concrete with a pump, we also have to pour it a little wetter. And we don't like um, pouring wet concrete. And here, you can tell it's in the fall. It's pretty cool. You can see how everybody's dressed. Um, Big Bissick, it's actually got a shirt on for once. So everybody's got hoodies on. You can tell it's pretty cold. So we want to keep the concrete pretty stiff so that it dries you know, dries decent and we're not stuck there all day and night. So you can see this concrete's, you know, this is a pretty, pretty thick slump. You know, you're probably looking at about a five right here, four and a half to a five slump. You can see how it just kind of sits there when they dump it. And uh, when you kick it around, it doesn't really move. But you'll see here in a minute right there, Mark's going to put some wet pads in right there. He's trowing the concrete. You can see. And they're setting it with the laser right there. That's what they're doing. They're setting a wet pad with the laser. And then they're going to grab this screed stick and they're going to pull 
off a wet screed. We call that a wet screed. That's just wet concrete at the grade that we want the floor to be. That's what that pad is right there. And that's a 16 foot screed stick there that they're using. So they're just pulling it off by hand. You can see big biscuits in there. Put we call that puddling where he's just raking the concrete back behind the screed stick and he's keeping it um, so they don't have to pull as much concrete. Especially when it's uh, the concrete's at a low slump like this, it doesn't pull really good. So now they got a, that's a 12 foot screed. So they're gonna use a 12 foot on one side and a 16 on the other. And that's gonna give them the lap that they want here. You can see we're just moving up there puddling along there's a different angle got biscuit behind there and I'm sure I don't know that's not me got two puddlers there it looks like Chris and biscuit and then uh, Mark and uh, Ryan are pulling the screed stick oh I just jumped into a little puddling I got the gray sweatshirt on there so they're setting up another wet pad here guys you can see getting that to grade and then um, they're gonna step in there looks like big biscuit is bow floating it we got a six foot bow float there um, that flattens it out really nice um, we used to have a, a skinnier bow float that was like a four footer but this six footer really flattens a slab out nice we really like that six foot one same thing they're just pulling it off got mark and ryan on the screed stick big biscuit puddling I just checked the grade over there. And that's how we do it, guys. That's how we get these floors pretty flat when you do it this way. Sometimes we use a power screed, but a lot of times we like to pull them off. Um, when they're, especially when the concrete's this low of a slump, I kind of like using the hand screed better. I think it works a little better on this really um, low slump concrete like this. Oh, we got the second truck here, guys. Let's see what this looks like. Yeah! That'll work. Nice five and a half slump. So guys, we probably could have poured this with less people if we poured this concrete a little wetter. But uh, when you pour concrete wet like that, um, you don't get the strength out of it that you're going to get when you pour it at a low slump like this. Um, water content is going to weaken your concrete. So if, if you're going to pour concrete, you want to keep the slump, you know, no more than like a six slump. And uh, slump is a test of how much water is in the concrete. They actually put the concrete in a cone and they test, they pull the cone off the concrete and it tells how far it sags after the concrete, or after the cone is pulled off the concrete. And that's just a kind of way of gauging how much water contents in it and uh, the consistency of the concrete. So you can see this is, you know, like I said earlier, this is uh, good stuff here. We're pouring it pretty dry. There's not a lot of water in it, so it's gonna be really strong concrete. But it does require a few extra people to do it this way. If you tried to pour this, you know, this low of a slump concrete and you didn't have enough help, you could get yourself into trouble. And uh, it's, it is a lot more work to pour it like this. Um, some people like to throw plasticizer and stuff in it to make it looser. But I tend to think that the stones kind of separate when you pour a plasticizer. Um, the kind of it, it gets really creamy at the top and the stones kind of settle down in so I don't think you end up with as good of a good of a mix as you do if you just pour at a low slump let me know what you think do you think plasticizer concrete if you know much about it is as good as pouring it 
at a lower slump? Do you think when you pour, you know, really, really loose plasticizer um, concrete that it's going to be as good as the kind of concrete that we're pouring here? Um, let me know in the comments what you think about that. We're just plugging along here, guys. We almost uh, got about three quarters of the way done, as you can see. It's going along pretty good. Stay with us. Finishing up here, guys. Putting a couple stakes in the skirt board. The boys are screening that over. Coming along nicely. I think I'd both float that side before they turn and burn, get that corner at least. Be a lot nicer. Take, all you need is one handle. Oh, tripping hazards all over the place, huh? Hey, he's going to float that real quick, Mark, just before we get our clothes in. Can you get it with one handle, Jen? You need two. Here. Worked out good. Giving her a hand bomb finish. Big biscuit style. Hit her with the power trowel, but they don't want it at all slippery. They do they want it kind of rough, they said. So we're gonna just hand bomb it. Leave them some fuzz on there because they do not want to slip on this thing. That's what biscuits do when we're just gonna lay it down by hand. But these leaves keep blowing in here. See all the leaves? I got the leaf floor trying to help out, but man, what a pain. These leaves coming in. That's what we're up to, guys. It's about 1.30. So it's not going bad today with the open ends on this building. We're getting some wind through here. It's drying pretty nice. There it is, guys. Biscuit later down by hand. That's what the customer wants, and it looks pretty good. How's your hand? Dandy. A little bit of... Oh, callous. <laughs> not bad. There it is, guys. Rowan didn't help at all. 
Didn't run through it today though, did you, Bubber? We got a. Everyone on YouTube yellow. Your mittens, yeah. You didn't have your mittens, huh? Big biscuit didn't have his mittens. It's a lot of Florida hand trial by yourself. There it is, guys. We're gonna come back Monday and cut it because it's Saturday and it's 2:30 ish, and we're out of here. Me and Big Biscuit are over here cutting the floor and washing it off. Got our relief cuts in there, as you can see. They're working on the barn a little bit. That's what she looks like, guys. We're going to be heading out of here. Just wanted to give you a final show of what it looks like.